White House Fellows, West Point, and Food for the Poor donors. We're very happy and excited to be here today. We're here in Honduras uh, with, with General Lofke and a few other special donors. We're going to take a look at the needs of the people and also with what he and other donors have done to lift people out of poverty. The need is to try to uh, give these people hope and it starts with the children. What we're doing here today is probably the most important thing that we could do and that is that they have taught the children how to teach the parents preventive medicine and the instrument that we use is the magic book and that magic book has 10 wellness lessons and what we stress is that if they follow those wellness lessons they will be healthy. She took my pulse and she took it for 15 seconds. She got 20 beats for those 15 seconds and then she multiplied by four to get a total of 80 beats per minute, which is perfect. People die from sickness. If you know the signs, you can prevent them. What we want the children to take away are these symptoms and then we want them to go home and teach it to the parents so that the whole community can prevent the stroke. For us, it's a great pleasure to be here today because we are establishing a village that will honor a great general by the name of Hank Emerson, but more, it's to honor John Gardner. Main vision is that the role of the leaders to keep hope alive. We're in a very important place that it's called Asema. What we're doing is uh, christening two boats that a young Chinese girl named Melissa Liu. She was 14, now she's about 18. She donated all the money for these two boats. We are on the Food for the Poor boats. They are 23-foot fiberglass boats. They come with uh, 40 horsepower outboard motors for each one, two strokes. They come with all of the requisite fishing equipment, including life jackets, safety equipment, fishing lines, GPS finders, and depth finders. Yeah, these boats are amazing. Uh, the constructions, it seems so solid, um, and it seems incredible what they're able to do with, with these. And everyone seems so happy. All the uh, those niños were just talking to me about how excited they are to be fishermen and uh, to be a part of pescadores. See, ¿Sí? who said? <laughs> Ochoa. Doctor Ochoa de Pesques, como va? But I spoke to one of them, and uh, uh, he was very happy that they're able, as a community, to share the catch. That's what impressed me the most, that they're not keeping the catch. They're spreading it for the community. This is totally a miracle for them. Yes, God bless you. Bless Melissa. These are the boats that were used prior to Melissa 1 and Melissa 2. As you can see, they're very frail. And so the boats are a godsend, but they live in very dire conditions, as you can see, the kind of shelter that they have. But we can go into one of these houses and take a closer look. This is Anastasia. Anastasia's been living in this house for more than 10 years. She is a widow of one of the fishermen of the General Hank Emerson fishing village. The fishermen help their community to the extent that whatever they bring in, they always make sure that she has as well. And she will also be a beneficiary of one of our Food for the Poor houses. She says thank you very much to the donors and thank you to Food for the Poor. We are actually in the process right now of securing land in La Ceiba, close to where we have the fishing village. The general and all of his colleagues, along with several donors for Food for the Poor, have uh, managed to raise funds for 30 houses, uh, much like the ones you see behind me. So this house is our typical Food for the Poor uh, constructed house. It consists of a corrugated zinc roof, concrete flooring, and you have two bedrooms with a bathroom, a sink, a flushable toilet, and a shower. We are together with Food for the Poor in trying to build a string of homes around the Caribbean so as to show 
where China and the U.S. are working together to bring the needy some help. So much of uh, a dad's mission and what's so important is there's all these people that um, deserve remembrance and deserve their stories to be told and that uh, and they've they've been lives of service. Larry Morford um, changed my dad's life. He was able to um, get through to my dad and, and talk to him and show with his actions the the possibilities of peace. We're together with all the people who work very hard to make this happen, working together to bring health to those who need it.